Okay. Come. A very warm good afternoon to my respected teachers and my dear friends. My name is Gulson Kumar. This is Satya Mojo. This is Aswasana. <laughs> In standing in front of you all to deliver a presentation on the topic comparison between India and Pakistan. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. Slides. Slides. Oh, I like you.
Done. A very warm good afternoon to my respected teacher and my dear friends. My name is Gulshan Kumar. This is Satya Boja. This is Viswasana. Standing in front of you all to deliver our presentations on the topic comparison between India and Pakistan. In this presentation, we will discuss about economic comparison, second advantage of doing business in India and Pakistan, third one is disadvantage of doing business in India and Pakistan, fourth is financial regulator of India and Pakistan, at last financial market of India and Pakistan. So let's come to our topic, first topic, economics comparison. As you all know, India is the fastest economic system. Right? 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 As you all know, India is the fastest growing economics in the world. As compared to Pakistan, is facing global global criticism inferior to the group terror. And the two of the biggest South Asian nations started their economics journey around the same time after gaining independence. We know that. India has got independence on 15 August 1947 and Pakistan's got independence on 14 August 1947. In the 1960s, when Pakistan's per capita GDP used to higher than the India's. However, over the years, India has not only surpassed Pakistan's per capita GDP, but taken a commanding lead on almost every economic front. This is the graph of GDP of India and Pakistan, in which blue line dotted India and the green line dotted Pakistan. In this graph, we can see that in 1960s, Pakistan's GDP per capita has increased to India. Now, some basic comparison of both the economy. This economy, through this table, we are discussing about what is the GDP growth of India and Pakistan. 2.7 trillion of India and Pakistan is 314.6 billion. Let's talk about GDP growth of one year of India is 7.1% and Pakistan's 5.2%. GDP growth of five year average of India is 7.6% and Pakistan is 4.7%. So let's talk about the populations of India is 1.3 billion and Pakistan 19.7 million. GDP per capita of India is 2K and GDP per capita of Pakistan is 1.5K. GDP per capita growth of India is 5.71% and Pakistan is 3.68%. Let's talk about the income tax rate of India, which is high, which is for 30.9% and Pakistan is 30%. Corporate tax, of, corporate tax rate of India is 32.2% is also far than the India is Pakistan, which is 30%. Let's talk of inflation. Of Inflation, consumer prices, which is India is 3.5% and Pakistan is 3.9%. Let's talk about the in unemployment of India, which is 2.6% and Pakistan is 3%. Through this comparison, we all discuss, we all say that India is greater than the Pakistan. So that's all for my side. And I would like to call Vishwas Sina to continue this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank My topic is the advantage of doing business in India and Pakistan and disadvantage of doing business in India. 
So, in, for India, the advantage of doing business in India. A massive population. As you all know that the population of India is 1.3 billion. It has become a huge marketplace for foreign investors. And with a huge marketplace and low labor cost and a market with no boundary has attracted lots of business opportunities for foreign investors. Low oppression cost. Low operation cost. Uh, as you all know that India is a developing nation, the operation cost of India is comparatively lower than other economic giants. And uh, the not only this, uh, the incorporation of a company is also less than uh, other economic giants. Uh, the incorporation of a company is uh, lie between six thousand to uh, thirty thousand. Uh, incentive by governments. To attract the foreign investor, the government introduced so many reform and incentive to uh, increase the FDI, uh, such as tax concession, uh, subsidy, special economic zone, and uh, um, subsidies, and Indian marketings. India is the workforce of India is so much. The workforce of India is so much confident. Uh, so much. Loyal to their work, and uh, they are um, they are they are no no giving attitude towards their work. Um, attract the foreign investor to do business in India. Organize employability. Employability is um, one of the major factor to do business in India. Employability. The workforce of India is around five hundred thirty billion a million, and most of them lie between eighty to forty year age group. And it is a youth group, and uh, the youth group, the foreign investor, are, foreign investor try, uh, want to uh, are interested in to do business in India because youth population increase the efficient of uh, uh, companies, and uh, it's also offer the longer longer sustainability and uh, serviceability to the business. So let us talk about the advantage of doing business in Pakistan. A strategic location. As Pakistan is surrounded by uh, one of the one of as Pakistan is surrounded by China, Iran, India, and uh, Afghanistan. So, with this huge market, um, many businessmen want to start their business in Pakistan. Low competitor, low competitor. Uh, uh, due due to poor infrastructure and uh, Due to poor infrastructure and due to poor infrastructure and instability of government, the competition in Pakistan is very low, lower than other lower than other uh, business giants. Or it has a golden opportunity to do business in Pakistan because of the higher GDP and uh, huge market. Okay. Uh, the next advantage of doing business in Pakistan is rapidly. Growing population. The population of Pakistan is uh, 200 million, a billion people, and it is estimated to grow around 300 million. Uh, and it creates many business opportunities in future. So it has a golden opportunity uh, to do business in Pakistan. Low labor cost, as compared to India and uh, India and China, the, the labor cost of Pakistan is comparatively lower than others. Uh, the labor cost of Pakistan is uh, 125 dollar. Uh, for monthly, and the labor cost of India is one hundred sixty dollars, and the labor cost of uh, uh, China is three hundred forty eight dollars per month. So, uh, foreign investment incentive. The Pakistan government also allows some of the reforms such as tax concession, uh, loan from low rate of loan, and change. Uh, uh, Okay, so disadvantage of doing business in India and Pakistan. First, India, corruption and corporate fraud. So in India, in recent years, there are a lot of corruption cases, uh, such as Scam 1992 and uh, and many more. Due to this, the uh, foreign investor does not want to uh, spend his income in this Indian economy. 
strike and closer due to so many strikes which happen in india such as labor strike which affects the business uh, and day to day activity of business in india so these are also risks to uh, doing business in india crime as the increase in crime is rapidly growing in india the and uh, not as in the crime is increasing rapidly in india and it also affects the day to day activity of business and it also leads to uh, lack of interest in uh, lack of interest in business and its impact in, uh, and the us government also us government also mr kita us government ne uh, india ko next to super next bill in the pub uh, the infrastructure of india is not so well uh, um, not so, so good well. as compared to china and pakistan uh, us and for heavy for heavy business uh, a company need to a high infrastructure quality so this is a disadvantage of doing business in india and disadvantage of doing business in pakistan centralized decision making the centralized is in pakistan decision decision making is uh, done by the top authority of a company and uh, they does not want to delegate his power to the middle level of management complex corporate law to start a business the pakistan has so many uh, paperwork to do so uh, so this uh, increase the complex complexity to do business in pakistan tax burden in sole proprietorship uh, and the tax of doing business is uh, less than <coughs> the tax burden in sufficient labor force in pakistan there is a there is lot of work force but the skill work force is not there in pakistan so it is it is a great disadvantage to do business in pakistan lack of communication due to poor english speaking community in pakistan and the all the business need to in, uh, communicate with its investor and the top level authority uh, the lack of communication skill is also uh, hamper the business uh, support to terror group the pakistan is also involved in so many terror group and it's also create a bad, bad impact on the mind of investor thank you that's all for me i would like to invite, i like to thank you my avina to continue this presentation i am now let's talk about financial regulator so you all know what is regulator have you heard of the word regulator in your kitchen mm -hmm. and what is it work yeah. has to uh, enforce and make rules to move on in any particular thing if a yes, simple regulator is uh, uh, mostly it's gas cylinders which controls the flow of gas all right when we want to increase we simply uh, start to move it so same is financial regulators financial regulators are those uh, persons or organizations which have the which are given the official right to for making sure that all the banks financial institutions work in a responsible way and do not break the law so the major regulatory board, uh, bodies in india are rbi scbi sebi and irb So let's first talk about Reserve Bank of India. So RBI is the, the uh, say RBI is the top or say king of the monetary institutions in India. It was established under the RBI Act of 1934, and these are the key functions of RBI. First is first is monetary authority. Now I am asking who is uh, currency in our country. Uh, yeah. So that's this is the point. Second is regulator and supervisor of the financial systems. So RBI protects the. interest of general public and promotes safer and sound banking system in india foreign exchange manager uh, foreign exchange manager rbi acts as a uh, 
supervisor uh, sorry rbi has played a development role in making sure that all the uh, export earnings investment earnings uh, capital on uh, capital received etc must be sold to rbi directly or directly to commercial banks is over of currency as the same thing regulator and supervisor of payment and settlement system so rbi has played has taken a very so many initiatives for making sure that all the payments in uh, india must be safer secure sound accessible and authorized development rule so this point is one of the develop, development role of rbi banker to the government we all know rbi act as advisory to the government and rbi also put some reserve of the government also provide some short term loans to both All right. So where will be that RBI? RBI acts as a banker to the government. So RBI also acts as advisor to the government. Uh, keep some reserves of the government and provide short term loan to both state and central government. Now, last is banker to bank, banker to bank. RBI is bankers to bank. That means it provides loans at uh, cheaper interest. Also, RBI known as lender of the last resort. All right. Now, second, we have SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. So, you know what is securities? What is securities? Protection, protection in the financial group. Securities are the financial instruments which have the money, which has the money, which has some monetary value or can be traded. So the Securities and Exchange Board of India protects the interest of investors in trading in trading those securities in the market. And it was established uh, in 1992 under the Security and Exchange Board of India Act 1992. Following are the key respons uh, responsibilities of SEBI, formulates the code of con conduct and guidelines for the proper functioning of intermediaries and business, promotes investor education. So SEBI also ensures that all their um, investors must be educated uh, on, the, on the intermediaries, regulates business in the stock and also other security market, audits the stock market performance, protects the interest of the security market participants, Yes, uh, as a investor, what do you want? That all your uh, investment must be safe and secure. To so save uh, so. levies fees. So what is levies? Levies is the pay is, is the amount that is payable. Let's say uh, we pay a tax tax to the government. That's the levies fees. Formulates, implements, and monitors exercising powers. Regulates credit training agencies. Furthermore, identifies and provides prohibits insider trading and unfair trade practices. This is to uh, save. Now we have Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India, that is IRBAI. 
So this is the authority that regula regulates insurance in India. All right, it was established under Insurance Regul Regulatory and Development Authority Act of 1999. These are the duties, power, and function of insurance regulators. First, we are registering and regulating insurance companies. So the simple protecting policyholders' interest. Policyholders means uh, the one who have taken the interest, uh, who have taken the insurance, or enjoying the policies. Licensing and establishing norms for insurance intermediaries. So uh, IRDI does the business, uh, does the work of licensing them, insurance inter intermediaries. Otherwise, uh, anyone can be intermediary and they may mislead the investors. Promoting professional organizations in, uh, insurance, regulating and overseeing premium rates and terms of non-life insurance towards specifying financial reporting. So that was all from me of the financial regulators in India. Now back to my system uh, for financial regulators in Pakistan. The topic of my presentation is financial regulator in Pakistan. It is the SBP, the State Bank of Pakistan. The State Bank of Pakistan <clears throat> is established under the Act SBP 1956. It is, it is the Central Bank of Pakistan. The headquarters are located under the financial capital of Pakistan, Karachi. The SBP has fully owned subsidiaries with the name of SBP PSC. PSC mean, it means Banking Service Corporation. It has it has 16 cities across different cities in Pakistan, also including the Islamabad, the capital cities of Pakistan. What is the reason, what is the main reason for establishment of SBP? The main reason for establishment of SBP is to is to country's credit and the monetary system. Country's credit and to the monetary system to encourage its financial state to encourage its financial statement. <sighs> The main objective of SPP is to regulate the country's credit and the monetary system to encourage its growth, development, financial stability, and the complete utilization of Pakistan's productive resources. Let's talk about the functions of SBP. The primary function of SBP is to regulate and supervision of regulate and the supervision of financial system, issuing of loans conduct of monetary policies and the second secondary function of uh, secondary function of sbp is the agency function what does it mean agency functions means management of public management of their management of foreign exchange and also the and also creating and also maintaining the close, close relationship with international financial institutions
The FBP is also responsible for external values of Pakistan currencies. It is authorized to sell and purchase of go uh, and sell of purchase of gold, silvers, and foreign exchange also. The act of FBP. <laughs> The act of FBP, which lead to the development of banking, promotion of uh, commercial bank, promotion of microfinance, and also the promotion of Islamic banking. It also provides training to their bankers. The FBP introduced bank officers training service within the month of establishment. Due to the acute shortage of bank, due to the acute shortage of trained bankers at the time of independence. Last one. Last one. The bank, the bank have actively participated in setting up numerous specialized institutions, which were designed to meet the medium and the long-term financial need of various economies. This institution includes Pakistan Industrial Credit Corporation of Pakistan. PICIC, Industrial Development Bank of Pakistan, IDBT, National Development Bank of Pakistan, NDFC, Agricultural Development Bank of Pakistan, ADPP, Federal Bank for Corporation, FBC, House Building Finance Corporation, HBFC. And thank you. I would like to invite this one. Well, we have financial market and institutions of India and Pakistan. What is financial market? Any marketplace where buyers and sellers participate in the trades in the trade of assets such as equities, bonds, currencies, and derivatives. Financial institutions, any establishment that focuses on dealing with financial transactions such as investments, loan, and deposits, like bank insurance companies, investment dealers, etc. Finance, financial in, involvement of Pakistan. Now you can see the State Bank of Pakistan. Now I'm asking you, which, uh, which which level of bank is this? Central or state? Central. State Bank of Pakistan is the Central Bank of Pakistan. Not so, much. <laughs> so this is a, just like we have State Bank of India, which is a state level bank. All right, but they have Central Bank, whose name starts with State Bank of Pakistan. Isn't it humorous? Banking, uh, now to list our banking sectors, they have public banks, private banks, foreign banks, and non-banking sectors. They have investment banks, development banks, microfinance banks, Islamic banking, and discount houses. Now, they, have, they, have, they also have security and exchange commission. They have insurance companies, stock exchanges, leasing, Modaraba, mutual funds. All right, financial dynamics. They have uh, a normal uh, interest rate of 6% for Average eleven point eight six. These are uh, numbers like in, in inflation. They have actual one point three two. Average seven point nine four. Highest they have faced thirty seven point eight one, and lowest they have faced ten ten point three two. So what are the financial barriers for Pakistan? First of all, coordination. They lack uh, coordination between their own neighboring countries. They keep. Uh, doing a terrorism activity with, uh, in India, which uh, prohibits India to do trade with uh, Pakistan. So this is one of the financial barriers of Pakistan, to, uh, financial barriers. Second, they have corruption, which is mainly from government sector. Third is terrorism. I don't need to define this. Everybody knows. Market related barriers, all right, and devalued currency. Their currency goes, the value of their currency goes up and down so often. All right, now this was ah, financial environment of India. So, India deals with capital market and money market. So, in capital market, India deals with equity market and debt market. And in money market, the India deals with treasury bills, call money market, commercial bill, commercial paper, and certificate of deposit. And capital market is for long term investments, and money market is for short term investment. Change the slide. Equity market. So, equity market, as you all know, that the share and we trade share in NSC and PSC. How many of you are trading NSC and PSC? No. Okay. So, we trade, so we trade, uh, 
stocks in NFT and BSA in India, and it is called equity market. Debt market. So when we trade bonds, uh, bonds, it is also bond. Then it is known as debt market. Bond or secret. Bond or security that represent a debt owned by the issuer to the investor. Now next. Treasury bill. It is a short term investment and it is for uh, 14 days, 182 days, 91 days, and 364 days. Is. And it is issued by RBI. And as it is issued by RBI, it is the safest um, instrument to invest. The rate of interest of Treasury bill is depend on the demand and supply of the fund. And money. The call money market. Commercial bill. Uh, wait, a commercial bill. Huh? Call money market. Call money market is a very short term uh, right. investment. It's just like for one day. It is used by banks to maintain the SLR and CLR. Uh, commercial bill. Uh, Deal in a bill of exchange, sell a draw a bill of exchange on the buyer to make payment for the certain period of that. The bill can be domestic and foreign bill, and the commercial bill discount by the uh, the commercial bill and is discount by the commercial bank uh, such as IDBI, CDB, and Exim Bank. Thank you. That's all from, from my team about uh, uh, about Indian Pakistan, the comparison between financial uh, situation between India and Pakistan. I want to thank all of you for your patience. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, if you suggestion, comment, sir. Sir, you were too nervous. Hmm? See, first thing. Hmm? How? You know, first suggestion you listen. The, the, when you are nervous, nervousness is very much natural. Right? How to deal with it? Like, you were moving too much. When you are doing this, you are more nervous. You are all nervous, but after one time, calm. Okay, was, was also nervous in the beginning, but gradually you were, he was able to overcome that. How to do that? Simple, you know, we are going to be able to do that. So, first, we are going to be able to do that. Okay? Here, 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 here. Take time. Taking time is the only solution to be calm. If you are calm, you are going to be able to do that. Okay? But, as much as you are going to be able to do that, as much as you are going to be able to do that, you are going to be able to do that. ठीक है आपको लगे या कि भाग जाए नर्वस ना लेकिन वो और बढ़ता चला जाए राइट फिर आप भी शुरू में घबराए उसके बाद फिर धीरे-धीरे आपको बॉडी लैंग्वेज चलने लगते हैं नाउ यू आर नॉट ओके जस्ट रिसर्च वर्क वाज गुड आप तो 15 मिनट में खत्म करने वाले थे हां नाउ इट टुक सो लॉन्ग हम